Why are axe blades curved in that way that they almost always are? And why were so many shields in the past round? Why was that such a popular shape? Well, uh, I'm going to use one argument to answer both these questions in this video, which has been sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. More of that later. Now, I can remember whilst uh, reading 2000 AD in my distant youth, um, and being rather impressed by the artwork of Kevin O'Neill when he drew Nemesis the Warlock. And I noticed that the axes that he drew were often not a, 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 a sort of continuous curve of the front of the blade, but instead they, they came to a very definite point. And I remember, I remember thinking, well, yes, why, why aren't axes shaped like that? I mean, that would put more punch into the axe, wouldn't it? it would, you know, if that, the front pointy bit of that axe hit you, it would, it would hurt more. So surely axes should be like that. But even then I realised that there was probably a pretty good reason that axes are not shaped like that, based on the simple observation that axes aren't shaped like that, not real ones. Um, no, generally the, the curvature on an axe blade is, an, is even, is part of a, a circle, circumference if you like, rather than part of an ellipse, and uh, they don't come to a sharp point in the middle. Um, so why is that then? Well, um, let's talk about geometry for a second, shall we? Um, I have here some triangles. So uh, if I get a triangle and put another triangle immediately next to it, I can put them two together like this so that they touch along a, an edge. And there, there are a few different ways that I can do that. But another option I have with a triangle is I can put them at a funny angle to each other. So they're touching, but as you can see, they're at a funny angle to each other. Now that option is not available with circles. If I get a circular thing, like for instance this plate, uh, I can put it neatly alongside another plate, or um, I can twist one plate, uh, or twist the other, or it, it, no, it doesn't really matter. However I twist these plates, they can only be right next to each other in the same relationship. If you draw a line between the centre of one plate to the centre of the other plate, it will always pass through the point at which the two plates are touching. And at that point, that line is perpendicular to the tangent. In other words, two circles always touch each other at right angles. And I think that this is significant because with axes, what you want to do is biff the other guy with your axe as hard as you possibly can. And a blow that hits bang at perpendicular to the target straight on at right angles is the one that's going to do the most damage. So that's what you want. You want to hit the, the other thing, whatever it is, at right angles if you possibly can. Now, uh, what is in battle um, the thing you're, you're, you're hitting? Of course, uh, when you're, you're, you're chopping logs and trees, logs and trees tend to be round, don't they? And actually in battle it's pretty much the same because um, an arm is roughly round in cross-section, so too is a leg, a head, round again in cross-section, and a body is fairly round in cross-section, though admittedly it's a, it's a bit flatter at the front. So broadly speaking, it's a, a curve hitting another curve. So if you've got a curved axe blade that hits an arm, because of those, well, the geometry which I demonstrated with those plates, it's pretty much always going to hit at right angles, and so impart the greatest amount of punch. Now, um, you've probably played billiards or pool or snooker, so you know that when one ball hits into another, you get a, a satisfying clack sound, and then they fly apart in predictable ways. Uh, now, if you get the cue ball and hit it so that the centre of the cue ball moves directly towards the centre of another ball, it'll hit it and then import, impart maximum uh, punch to that other ball which will then fly away straight ahead. But you also know, don't you, that if you hit it so that it hits the target ball slightly off centre, it'll still impart a lot of energy. So if you whack this cue ball pretty hard, it'll hit there, you'll still get that sound, same loud satisfying clack noise and then this one will fly off but this time at a slight angle but still with a lot of power behind it. But you also know, don't you, that there's such a thing as the glancing blow. Now, if we take a pointy thing and, and uh, shove it towards my head, and if that point hits me smack in the middle of the head, ow, that's really gonna hurt. But if the point misses, and instead it's the rest coming up behind it that's hitting my, my head, that's very definitely a glancing blow. That's not gonna do nearly so much damage. But you know, don't you, that if you frisbee a plate at my head, a circular plate, and even if, it, even if the center of that plate is not going directly at my head, you know, bang, ow, that's really going to hurt because the bit that the, the plate that contacts my head will do so at right angles, much like those two snooker balls hitting each other, and ow, I will be the target snooker ball. 
and it'll really hurt. So please don't do that. So another observation is that felling axes tend not to have such a, a great amount of curvature in the blade. Uh, battle axes tend to have more curvature. Now, why might that be? Well, perhaps it's because logs stay still. They're really quite predictable things. You see a log, it lies on the ground, and if you've been using an axe for a while, you're probably quite accurate with it, and you can hit the bit of the log that you intended to hit. Whereas people, during battles, they, they, don't they fidget? They fidget all over the place. They just will not keep still, so you don't know exactly where your target is going to be when you start your swing. So with a curved axe hitting, say, an arm, um, if he moves a little bit further away, you're going to clip him with the top of the axe. If he moves a little bit towards you, you're going to hit him with the bottom of the axe. It's much less predictable where the target's going to be. So you may want to uh, hedge your bets a bit with a greater curvature of a war axe. And so perhaps that's a pretty simple explanation for why war axes have a greater amount of curvature, usually, than felling axes. So that's why I put it to you. And you see, I, I haven't read this in a book. I've made all this up. This is just me conjecturing. Um, but I looked at those axes of Kevin O'Neill's and thought, there's something wrong about that. And I can see that with one of those axes, unless you hit absolutely perfectly with the pointy bit in the middle, you're always going to get a glancing blow. You're going to be getting a cut effect rather than a smash, a, 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 a chop effect, which is perhaps what you're after to finish off your, your, uh, your foe. Axes um, are better than swords in they, they have a bigger smashing effect because they're a weight on the end of a stick. So they have this, this greater power to, to chop into something or just to, to batter it out of the way by sheer force. So you just want that really clean connection. Uh, whereas if you just want to cut someone, maybe you'd use a saber or something with a longer cutting edge. Um, so what's the advantage of an axe? Well, it's a weighted blade on a stick. And, it's, and so to get the full advantage of that, you have a curved blade. Now, I was going to talk to you about uh, The Great Courses Plus. Uh, they're sponsoring this video very generously, and um, they run online. They're, they have a huge website, essentially, and there are loads of videos that you can watch there on all sorts of topics. Distinguished professors with you know, university degrees and everything will talk to you about uh, not just history, but um, science, and there are all sorts of how-to-do stuff courses as well on things like cookery and photography. So. What you can do is you can click on the address, the shortened address in the description of this, or if you prefer, you can type in www.thegreat.www. I have to get this right. Thegreatcoursesplus.com stroke Lindy Beige. And this will take you to a free offer. Yes, one month's free use of the site. So you can see loads and loads of videos. Uh, you could see one month you could see loads. And if you decide after all that that you've seen enough, then you can just unsubscribe and you will pay nothing. So why not uh, visit The Great Courses Plus and then you can watch loads of videos on all sorts of topics that might please you. Now, back to the geometry that I was talking about. Maybe this too would explain why so many shields are round. And so many shields are round. This is a very popular, perhaps the most popular shape of shield is round, or at least was. Why might this be? Well, one of the reasons is very similar to the, the axe. Um, if I want to biff you with the edge of this shield and I go like that, baff! Um, obviously, if I hit you smack in the center, that's going to hurt. Um, but if I'm a little bit um, off, off to the center and the center of this misses the center of your head, but I still connect, the bit that does hit your head, just like those plates frisbeed at your head, will oh still really, really hurt. And uh, I was talking to someone who does Battle of the Nations. And um, in Battle of the Nations, the object is to batter your opponent to the ground. You have to knock him off his feet somehow. And he had a teardrop-shaped shield. And the teardrop bit, the, the pointy bit, was towards his elbow, the way he held it, and his fist was near the rounded end. And he told me that the reason for this is that he wanted this broad, curving surface, because that gave him a solid hit, no matter how he thrust at his, his opponent. If he caught him with some bit of that curving thing, it would be a solid hit. Whereas, if he were to thrust with the pointed end of his shield, Yes, he might hit someone smack on with the end, in which case he would just transfer lots of energy. But his shield isn't going to penetrate the guy's armour. Um, he's not going to thrust his shield through a guy's helmet into his head. He's just trying to daze the guy, knock him uh, back, make it difficult for him to see by constantly bashing his head this way and that. So 
Um, he won't use the pointed end because it, it's actually not going to do any more damage, even if he does get with the, very, the, the point smack on target. And if he misses even very slightly with the pointed end, he just gets a useless glancing blow and he, he possibly will uh, overreach himself as well and get out of position. So um, that's pretty similar, really, to the reason for the axe blade. If you, if you want to hit someone with a, a, uh, an edge of something, part of a circle is a very efficient shape to hit them with. Now, what about parrying, which of course is what you do with the edge of a shield a lot? Well, I want you to imagine that there's someone thrusting a spear at me, somewhere around here, and he's coming at me and I keep knocking him out of the way with my round shield, and I do this very successfully because I'm really rather good at it. But then the next day, he tries again, and for no good reason whatsoever, I've decided to have a shield this shape. Okay, so, he thrusts at me, and I could, I might, if I'm really lucky, get with the point. I might hit the point right on the end and knock his spear out of the way. Well done me. But, I'm, look at the shape of this, I'm enormously more likely to miss slightly above or slightly below. If I go uh, slightly below, then it's going to ride over the top and oh, get me, okay. And if I get slightly, uh, I go slightly above, so it's slightly below, and again, it's got me down here somewhere. Um, this is not a good shape for knocking something aside that's coming at you from in this general area. Whereas this, this is. So it's a funny thing, uh, but uh, rounded is sort of more pointy in a lot of ways. And, and to be pointy is often rather pointless. Did the